The Volkswagen T-Roc has been a huge hit in Australia, especially the R model. This is the TSI 110, which is the entry level model, and I think you'll be surprised at how much it has on board. Let's take a look. TSI has 445 litres of boot space being the front wheel drive model. This one in particular also has the add-on of the remote boot access. So what this means is when you're really stuck with your shopping, swipe underneath, the boot will open for you whether the car is locked or unlocked as long as you've got the key on you. In here you can see there's plenty of space. We have the spare wheel which is a space saver underneath and you simply hit the button to close. If you're walking out of your house and you want the boot to be open by the time you get there, you can control it from the key as well. I love this feature, it's very handy and I always use it when it's on a car. The space in the rear of the T-Roc is just enough for adults. It's not bad, I wouldn't say it's amazing, but we fit, if you wanted to take four of us we'd be all good the middle seat is a little bit compromised as you can see it still has the floor tunnel for the all-wheel drive system so you would really only want kids in the middle here or a short distance run you have two USB ports in the middle you have some really nice cup holders here which actually move so that you can put in different size drink bottles and things like that really nifty design as well as that there is a handle here when you pull that out I can reach directly into the boot and grab stuff out, which is another nifty feature. The overall feel of the seats is quite nice. Matches the front. We have a nice velvety middle section with some leather. Yeah, not bad. The center infotainment is really nicely laid out with two dials, but all your controls are still on the steering wheel as well. You've got a tire monitor sensor, vehicle status, driving data, you can go to your sound menu, you've got your Apple CarPlay connected, must use a cord in this one. You've got your radio, media, standard phone usage. For me, I tend to keep it on just my average consumption or the tyre pressures, unless I'm using Android Auto. As you can see at the bottom here, the air conditioning settings are unreal. You've also got your parking sensors and automatic parking. Your driver mode in the top left and your automatic stop start uh, on and off button. The air conditioning being touch sensitive panels is a really nice premium feel uh, that Volkswagen do. I really like how simple everything is to control. Um, it's very responsive, very easy to see in, in everyday driving and to understand where you need to touch everything. Below that, you've got your two USB-C connections, as well as a wireless charging bay, a 12 volt on the left, and your engine start stop. You've got your gearbox in the middle, and your um, park on and off in the center. The cup holders in the center have three different sizes. So as you can see, this one's a bit big for a can. This is for the smaller cans, and I find this one fits the middle size can rather well, which is a really nifty idea so that you always have a decent hold on whatever drink you're carrying. The center gauge cluster on the standard model is pretty decent. Um, I do like the premium version a lot better, but I do think they did well to have the center dial the way it is. So you can go to a more um, computerized look with your average fuel consumption on the left and your trip on the right and just your kilometers dead center. Or you can have it with the speed as the dial 
um, your gears on the left and your kilometers on the right, range and all your notifications down the bottom. Or you can have your revs. Personally, the revs is what works best for me. When you turn on your cruise control, your active cruise control down the bottom, all the details will come up. 110 TSI inside is a really nice base package in terms of feel. You have a really nice leather steering wheel, you have all the buttons you need on the wheel itself to control the infotainment and the car itself. It's really easy to change the drive modes in the middle and I really like the tall stalk on the shifter, it's really easy to manage. The seats at the front do have manual adjustment and they're rather well versed in terms of adjustability you can lower the seat right down raise it re relatively high and you have a really good um, adjustability through the column between the height and how far out it comes in the telescopic sense which really allows you to set yourself up really comfortably and once you've done that it makes a world of difference and Volkswagen have always been good at that the leather and the velvet or Alcantara style centers of the seats is a really good base package um, level of quality, I feel. Um, they have a nice little bit of hug around the midsection, but it's only mild. It's, it's a good, good level for everyday driving. Now we'll get to the engine. So this base model is a 1.4 liter four cylinder turbo through the front wheels and you do get four drive modes eco normal sport and an individual setting to set up there isn't a huge range of settings in terms of what you can change um, so you probably won't find yourself using the wheel that much but you may love that feature for me driving it in eco mode has been really nice the engine tune is really progressive um, there's not a lot of throttle aggressiveness in it and you get the maximum fuel saving. I've been able to get it on my round town trips down to under sixes, so that's per liters per 100, 5.8, 5.7, you can really get it down if you're just putting about, going to the shops and back. As for the sport setting, um, the engine itself is just feels a little bit down on power. Now that doesn't really matter because it's the base model. It's not meant to be the sporty model. I like that they put a sports mode in there for you. And one of the things I do like about this is when you're in the normal or eco setting, when you want to do an overtake, there's not a lot of power there. So you really need, it needs to rev the engine and you really need to get up and go. And one thing that really helps that and makes it more effective with such a small engine is that on the shifter, if you pull backwards once you're in drive, it shifts the gearbox to its sport setting. Now, if you were to do that and then you go for your overtake, the gears work really well with the engine and it really just gives you that extra little bit of oomph that you need to do those little maneuvers or to um, merge and things like that. So I really like how dynamic the gearbox is and how quickly and well Volkswagen have made it available to change the settings for the gearbox. By one click down, you're in your sports mode, another click down and you're back in your normal eco mode or drive mode. You do have your paddles if you want to quickly change to manual and if you hold the up paddle it'll switch back into automatic gear changing which I just like how the Volkswagen do a really good job of thinking how someone wants to drive the car and allowing plenty of options for you to use the car how you need and change the settings as you need. You can do the things you need to do in multiple different ways so that it works for everyone and Volkswagen are great at thinking about that. One thing that does trouble me a little bit and I don't know if it's just a temperature safety but when you're in eco mode and you stop the car to go in for the night if you come out the next morning it tends to start up in eco mode but the gearbox is in its normal mode. Now I don't know if that's just because the gearbox needs to warm up but it doesn't seem I haven't seen it change back itself so I do find myself clicking the drive mode and selecting eco again to put it in the eco gearbox mode just to make sure I'm getting the maximum fuel of safety, sorry, fuel efficiency, sorry. So for me, it would be nice if, if that just kept its settings when you turn the car on, if it's allowed to, if it's a safety setting, then fair enough. I do find the visibility out of this car is really nice. 
Uh, you have great visibility at the rear, and I do like how all of the safety tech doesn't get in your way in the center with the rear vision mirror. A lot of cars have this bulky setup up top, and it does impede your vision just a little bit. Um, it's very noticeable, where this is a really sleek design, and Volkswagen and Audi do it really well, um, keeping that nice and sleek. The iDrive system uh, on board as standard is a really nice raft of safety features. So your active cruise control will keep you in the lanes, it'll brake when the car in front brakes, so it latches on so you can keep in traffic rather nicely with your cruise control still working. It does have stop start at the lights, uh, parking sensors and self parking as standard on the base model and I think that is unreal. Well done Volkswagen. I like the reverse camera. I think it's pretty clear. I like how it's got the sensors around the car, not just front and rear. I do think that it has these two lanes in the reverse camera, and I have seen on some other brands that those lanes can steer with your front wheels. What that does, it just helps you maneuver into the spot knowing where you're gonna end up, and it would be nice if Volkswagens did the same. It's one thing that I think could be just made a little bit better but it still is a great system and one of the best on the market. The standard sound system in this car is pretty good. Um, I can't fault it in any way. The infotainment is rather nice and having the plug-in Android Auto works really well with this screen. The one thing that I, I don't quite like is the, the gauge cluster in here, the digital gauge cluster on the standard TSI 110. There's a lot of black space around where the bigger screen fits and there is an optional package on this car which gives you the better screen in the in the dash um, with a few other technical bits like a better sound system and things like that I do think if I was going to choose one I would definitely add the uh, tech pack for that reason mainly just that nice gauge cluster it has the GPS in it and things like that where this one is very much just about your driving details and that's it um, and I'd also definitely add on the automatic boot functionality because that is so handy. Um, it's, a, it's a great feature. I really can't recommend it enough on your daily driver car. And the th other thing I really like about the T-Rock is it is just that little bit higher. It's a little bit comfier to get into and you just don't worry as much. If, you were, if you're someone who worries about parking, worries about scrubbing your wheels and um, hitting gutters if you have a steep driveway all these kinds of things this car is just that little bit better at getting up those things than say the polo or the golf now they, they are still a, a really good level of height compared to other models or other brands um, but the t-rock's just that little bit more just to give you that little bit more peace of mind um, I do find that a lot of people really like the look of this car. It has been really popular in Australia, um, especially the R edition. All right, let's try out some automatic parking. As a base package, it is really well equipped. I think that the engine just needs a few more kilowatts to feel um, smoother and more comfortable. However, if you're just cruising around the city, going to the shops and back, you won't really notice that issue. It's only really when you're on the back roads, going on the freeway at a, at a higher speed that you'll kind of notice that um, little bit of a lack of power. I think that 
it looks rather nice uh, the safety is amazing um, and the quality is, is also really good and at the $41,000 mark which is indicated by their website um, it would be in the forty two to 43000 mark I'm pretty sure with the tech pack and the boot pack the boot is $600 I do remember that um, it is not too expensive um, and you've still got the 140 TSI to go if you do want a bit more power or you go the full performance package in the R so there is a lot to offer here at the base if you just like the look of it and you want one um, so definitely go down check them out if you like them um, and if they're in your budget and have a look at the colors the accessories that you can add on and i'm sure that if you like these cars that they'll be the perfect fit for you that's one of the best things about them there's a lot to add on to each model and you can have it exactly how you want it almost i do love the visibility of it through the revision mirror you can see plenty um, and yeah well done volkswagen thank you for lending me this car thank you exhaust notes Hit the like button if you liked the review and uh, subscribe. And if there's anything that you want to ask a question on, please post it in the comments. And I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.